hello guys welcome to the dreams of anatomy um knowledge um, youtube channel today we'll be dealing with the breast anatomy and the outline we are going to be using is introduction the shape and extent relation structures and um, blood supply innovation lymphatic drainage development and then applied anatomy so the introduction when you hear the word breast is just another name for mammary gland you know that mammary gland is used for feeding um, young babies. And the introductory aspect, you have that the breast is a modified apocrine gland. When you hear apocrine, it has to do with sweat gland. You know, the sweat gland is it secretes sweat. It's a sweat gland. So, not that what the breast secretes is um, sweat, but at least it secretes something, it secretes milk from the parenchyma. We learn about those parts, so don't panic. It is found in both sexes, as both males and females. But there is slight variation because in males, it's not usually well developed. So you might see some authors using things like um, rudimentary, while in females, it is well developed and found between the second to sixth strip that is usually huge. And then the shape and the extent. Um, the shape is usually hemispherical boy. So I'm going to say it's pyramidal in shape. Um, I'll tell you that the shape is very it's very there's no specific um agreed um, shape for the human breast and then the extent, the vertical extension and then the horizontal extension. We look at the extents um based on two um subcategories as the vertical extension and the horizontal extension because we can't just say um second to c strip it has to be divided into both the vertical extension and the horizontal extension the horizontal extension is um from lateral border of the sternum you know sternum you have um the body um you have the manubrium of the sternum here so it's from the lateral border of the sternum that you have this and it extends to the mid axillary line the mid axillary line is usually found between the um, anterior and posterior axillary folds. Anteriorly, you have the anterior axillary fold, then posteriorly, you have the posterior axillary fold. So that is where it is found. Then the vertical extension of a second to C strip, just as we said before. And what are the relations? The relations include um, pectoral fascia, the three muscles that form the breastbed called serratus anterior pectoralis major and external oblique um, muscles so this just um, this diagram just illustrates all the relations uh, for example the pectoral fascia is a deep fascia fascia is a covering so this is a deep fascia and then the muscles that form the breast bed pectoralis major this is the muscle this kind of a muscle that is um supplied by all spinal segments of the brachial plexus so it's usually used to gauge um, brachial plexus injury or how active the brachial plexus is and then this is the chest wall all these ones are ribs um ribs ribs then this is pec minor it doesn't form the breast bed because it comes after that's under the pectoralis major you have to when you are dissecting you have to remove the pectoralis major to see the pectoralis minor um so this is the navel um this is the body of the breast then um this is retro mammary space in between the breast and the pectoral fascia then the structure the structure of the breast is the um is divided into three um this slide there's a uh, there's an error there it's supposed to be into three which include the skin the stroma the areola so first of all the skin is the part that contains that nipple and then this nipple is the most sensitive part and it's usually a conical projection of the breast that is usually found at the fourth intercostal space as when you are checking below your first rib you have first intercostal space so below the fourth rib you have a fourth intercostal space so that's where the nipple approximately it's not everybody because they have different variation in size of the breast and then it contains wood muscle fibers this smooth muscle fibers make the nipple stiff and it can erect at any time and then can flatten afterwards. And then 
another thing is that it is richly innovated as it has what rich innovation this rich innovation is um true sensory nerve endings that's why it's the most sensitive part and then the second part of the breast is the areola the areola is a circular area of pigmented skin surrounding the base of the nipple that is, contains large number of modified sebaceous glands and this modified sebaceous gland they they lubricate the nipple and the areola so areola is helping to provide what lubricates itself and also the nipple and the sebaceous gland are kind of enlarged during pregnancy and there appear small nodular elevations called montgomery tubercles i know you might have heard of this before maybe you don't really know how to put it it's called montgomery's um, tubercles and the last part of the breast is the stroma it's kind of connective tissue part and one striking feature of this stroma is that it's called it contains what we call the suspensive ligaments of cooper this suspensive ligament of cooper is formed when connective tissue condenses into fibrous strands or septa and then the suspensive ligament of cooper is what is responsible for protuberance of the breast when someone is young that is erect standing erect but when the person is old like 70 years it becomes kind of pendulous what i mean pendulous the suspensive ligament of cooper is weakens so that's where you see um, pendulous and um, breast it usually comes out in um, short and sad questions so take note and what's the next one next one is the blood supply the blood supply is split into two the atrial supply and the what venous drainage Atrial supply that's what brings blood to the breast and it's usually by internal thoracic mammary artery mainly then axillary artery and posterior intercostal arteries and what are the venous drainage you have the axillary veins the intercostal thoracic um, intercostal internal thora, intercostal veins then also internal thoracic veins and let's look at the innervation innervation is by lateral and anterior cutaneous branches of second to sixth intercostal nerves and also you can have parts of them from supraclavicular nerves